Hello and welcome to The Arise interview where we take time to reflect on the big stories from the news and on the fortunes and affairs of the world in an hour of conversation with commentators, analysts and thought leaders. I'm Charles Anya Golu. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, Britain's famous Notting Hill Carnival, Europe's biggest street festival and a celebration of Afro-Caribbean culture would normally be weaving its loud and colorful way through West London today. But this year's experience is a very different digital one. For the first time since its inception, the carnival is going from the streets to the screens. We'll speak to the director of the Notting Hill Carnival Enterprise Trust. And later, tributes have been paid throughout the weekend to the African-American actor Chadwick Boseman, whose death was announced in Los Angeles on Friday night. The star of the groundbreaking movie Black Panther died at home of colon cancer, which had been diagnosed in 2018. We'll reflect on a life cut short with the founder of the Electronic Urban Report, Lee Bailey, who has interviewed Chadwick Boseman. Coming up in a moment. Now, for the first time in its 54-year history, Europe's largest street party, the Notting Hill Carnival, is taking place online due to the coronavirus pandemic. Sunday is traditionally the Children's Day, and today, Monday, is usually for the grown-ups. But the streets of London are not filled with the usual parading dancers, music and celebrations. Instead, the carnival's organisers have put together a digital festival with videos filmed from all over the world. They're urging revelers not to flock to Notting Hill. So have their calls been heeded? Well, in a moment, we'll speak to the director of the Notting Hill Carnival Enterprise Trust, Pepe Francis, MBE. But first, here's a short clip of the new digital Notting Hill. Notting Hill Carnival has a particularly interesting history that links so so much to the current climate uh, with what's happening in the world that it's it's even more important that that we do this like this you know during the whole COVID thing we have lost many of our uh, pioneers of Notting Hill Carnival as well so I think this year this is an extra special tribute we can't be on the street but Carnival is very much alive Carnival is a protest we are all rebels <laughs> and just being in carnival just taking part in carnival you are joining um the commemoration and you are standing up for what is right you're standing up for freedom and so that's why it's really important even if it's on the box look at it make sure you engage with it um understand it and and support it in whichever area you're in well, an explanation there of the spirit behind the digital carnival. Well, for more on the new online Notting Hill Carnival, I'm joined now on the digital line from West London by the director of the Notting Hill Carnival Enterprise Trust, Pepe Francis, MBE. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Pepe, for joining us. I hope you can hear me there. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. And it's Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, so... So the Notting Hill Carnival, I mean, I remember attending it virtually every year in England. I mean, I can't believe that it, there's no, not going to be anybody on the streets. It's going from the streets to the screens for the first time ever. How authentic is that experience going to be? Um, well, I think it's very authentic and it's very um, surprising to the majority of um, carnivalists. But it's where we are at, and um, being that we have to adhere to a pandemic that is going on, I think the next best thing is what we've got now. In what, what have you had to take into consideration, given that it's a very physical, normally, um, carnival? I mean, the whole point of carnival is, is going there and sort of being there. I mean... What what are you doing digitally online that you hope will compensate for that lack of being on the streets? Um, well, first of all, let me correct something. I am uh, the, the, the organizers of the Notting Hill Carnival is now the Notting Hill Carnival Limited, and um, we, I, I am not a director of the Notting Hill Carnival. The Enterprise Trust is no longer running the carnival. 
but I am in charge of the Steel Man Association. And one of the, the, the earliest things that I have had to adapt to is the steel bands going digital. And um, we actually have found it very interesting. And I think it's come up very well. Tell us how it's come up very well then. I mean, w what is it that makes it sort of stand out and compensates for the lack of being on the streets? I don't think anything will compensate for the lack of being on the streets. Um, but uh, in terms of what we have had to record and the, the rehearsals we've had to put in to, for the, re the recordings to go digital, um, you know, it's been just as much work and a lot more intense, I think, because we've done it in a short space of time. And it, to compensate for Panorama, which is the main steel band event on the Saturday evening, um, this year we didn't have it, so we went digital with it, and what we call it, um, analogy, and it's been very, very successful, I think. Of course, um, despite all that, I mean, there are some sacrifices, aren't there? Because, I mean, the richness of Afro-Caribbean food, I mean, I, I love the food there, you know. Also, you've got African food and all that, that convivial atmosphere, um, you know, the, 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 the fact that, you know, people meet up with friends, people are coming from all over Europe and so on, all that simply not possible in the midst of a global pandemic. And of course, your, your steel band, I mean, part of what I suppose they get from this is the vibes they get from having a live audience. Of course, <laughs> I mean, you know, in that for over 50 odd years, we've been, 50 years we've been doing that. And you know, to come on this year, it's just, it feels very empty when you go into Notting Hill, uh, when you go down into Labra Grove and you, you, you can feel the emptiness and you, you, you know, you realize what you are, you are missing, but, you know, circumstances is as it is and it's better to be safe than sorry. I mean, I'm kind of used to going to sort of Bayswater and trawling through Bayswater, Notting Hill, all that area. I mean, you're in West London at the moment, I take it. What does it look like on the streets? I, I've just come from, not, from Ladbroke Grove, which is the heart of where Carnival is. I've just walked around the area. And, you know, it's like, and, and then, I mean, you cannot really describe it. It's, it's just dead. Um, you know, there isn't even a street party going on anywhere, which obviously wouldn't be allowed anyway because of the social distancing and all that. But, you know, it just feels really weird. I mean, but I mean, I suppose that uh, sense of a physical gathering that you're talking about and that sense of a community not allowed to take place. But is the concern also that people will still try to get together um, is that sort of borne out by the facts? So what, was, it, was there any presence at all on the streets despite the limits and the restrictions? Because there was some fear that people would simply get together and organize their own parties. No, I think, yeah, there was fear of that and we were very conscious of that. And, um, but I think the Carnival Committee it made a, a very bold bid in, try, in trying to prevent people from doing that. And I think a lot of people have paid respect to the Carnival Committee and has not come out on the streets. Um, and today it's business as usual within the streets of Notting Hill. And, uh, I mean, you, you've obviously been um, in the UK for quite some time. You've been part of the Notting Hill Carnival. I mean, it's been going for 54 years. Uh, you, you, I don't know if you were there from the, from the outset, but just take us through the history of Carnival and how it's grown from a small sort of gathering in the middle of West London to the biggest street party in Europe. I, I, I think it just grew because in the early days when it first started, when Mrs. Laslett first brought that float with the kids out um, up Portobello Road and a lot of the then, which was a very strong West Indian community, um, started following her and those the children 
And obviously there was um, Russ Henderson and Sterling Betancourt leading it with, with steel pans. So it, it just it just evolved from there. And then it became, you know, you've got, you have the Leslie Palmers of this world who took it a, a, a step further and different organizations came along and took it a step and a step further till it actually got to the point where the authorities from being the happy policeman that was joining in with the bands decided oh no we've got to put this under some kind of um, restrictions and they decided to have a circular route um, so when from being able to go anywhere within the notting hill area to now having to stick to a circular route it just tells the difference of where it's come from from um 64 to now and i mean is it something that was there a conscious effort to try and make it get bigger or, or was it did it just grow of its own really without any sort of you know plan to to expand it no no it just grew naturally i mean for a start i mean london is a multicultural society and so different cultures started joining the carnival so it was not it's not just now a west indian carnival it is a multicultural carnival so people has joined from different parts of the world that lives in london you know like the brazilians and moroccans and you know everybody has got some kind of a float or some kind of performance within carnival and it, it, it just grew naturally beyond of course the the idea of it um growing because the or at least happening because the west indians wanted to share their culture i mean was there also an element of I suppose defiance and, and anger at the time because i mean 1960s britain was a fairly racist society and um i would i, I just imagine whether or not there was a sort of you know element of of militancy there and defiance to say well it doesn't matter what you think of our culture we're going to put it on the streets and we're going to you know shove it up your nose essentially uh no i don't i don't, I don't think so i don't think i don't agree with that um, a sort of idea of how the carnival was came about. Now the carnival came about naturally because the Caribbean people in the area wanted to carry on the celebrations that they've been doing in the, in the West Indies for for years before, and they just wanted to carry it on. I don't think anything racially motivated, motivated or anything like that um, came into play um, in when it first started. Of course, now that it's gone digital, uh, do you see it, elements of it remaining digital or is it just going to be this way, do you think, for this year until the, the COVID sort of problem goes away or at least, you know, gets uh, under control? Uh, I, uh, to be quite honest, I think it's this year is a one off. Um, but I see no reason why, when Carnival is on next year, that we shouldn't have some form of digital um, exposure going on on some of the major um, television studios because they don't really cover Carnival in its entirety. While when it's on the streets and they, you know, they more look for what brings you. Okay. Yes. Okay, Pepe Francis, I really appreciate your taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much indeed. And Pepe Francis, MBE, is the director of the Notting Hill Carnival Enterprise Trust, and he also runs some of the steel bands that take part in the carnival. You're watching The Arise Interview, plenty more still ahead, as we continue our chat about the Notting Hill Carnival, Europe's biggest street party, which has gone online for the first time since its inception. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Arise Interview. I'm Charles Anyekulu. Now, for the first time in its 54-year history, Europe's largest and loudest street party, the Notting Hill Carnival, is taking place online because of the coronavirus pandemic. The two-day event, Sunday was the first day and today, Monday the second, usually brings more than a million people to the streets of West London. Parades, music and Caribbean and African food are all part of the spectacle which celebrates Afro 
Caribbean culture. This year, though, the organizers are bringing the festival direct to people's homes for the first time ever. And let's go straight away and talk to the popular singer and DJ Richmond Kessie from the British Afrobeat band Yabba Funk. Uh, great to see you. Richmond and thank you very much indeed for joining us. I know you're doing quite a number of things today so we appreciate your uh, coming to be with us and you are of course part of a group of DJs that are DJing online during this bank holiday weekend in the UK. Just tell us what you guys are actually doing. Um, yes, um, it's, it's great to be here and um, as you mentioned earlier today would it be probably the biggest the biggest um, turnover um, in, 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 at the carnival, Europe's biggest um, street festival. And unfortunately, as you said, due to Corona, it's not happening. Um, so, I mean, luckily, a lot of us, um, the DJs, who probably would have been doing something on, on, on this. They decided to sort of take it online. Um, I'm, I'm part of a group of DJs. Uh, we call ourselves the Foreign Office. Um, and um, from, I think we started from Friday, actually. It's been a, it was a four day event. So we started on Friday where every evening there'll be at least three or four DJs online um, actually playing car carnivalesque music. Are you actually doing anything specific to the online carnival events or, or is it around the carnival sort of thing? The carnivals, I mean, like I said, normally, probably would have um we probably would have dj'd somewhere probably would have kind of had a had an after party somewhere um tonight but um as it's not happening we just thought we just kind of take it online but i mean the event we're doing is just mainly it's just mainly around the, the carnival trying to lift people's spirits up um obviously you know we, we've been kind of locked in for for a while and obviously with the black lives matter movements all of that kind of stuff so we thought we just kind of play some music to sort of lift people's um, spirits up despite the fact that the carnival is not happening we can still take the carnival into people's living rooms and into people's gardens and, and i mean um richmond we've seen throughout uh, lockdown in london i mean clubs and nightclubs being shut down but we've also seen in london particularly dozens of illegal raves being organized i mean tell us about these raves and what's going on with them i understand they're advertised on social media and people join whatsapp groups in secret and the address isn't given or something till you know like 10 minutes before the rave i mean i'm not saying you're part of it i'm just saying <laughs> that you're probably in a better position to know about it than we are well i think it's, it's kind of going back to the old ways of doing things i mean um back in the 80s the early 80s when the whole rave scene was kind of taken take, taken off that's how people used to advertise their events. It was all sort of um, by word of mouth or a text or, you know, um, you know, meet at this place, meet at this, this junction, junction 14 at six o'clock or something. And but that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's the way it's gone. Yeah, it has it, been advertised um, on social media. Some people are kind of doing it by WhatsApp groups, as you said. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't had the pleasure of going to any, any of these parties. Um, and I probably wouldn't really encourage anyone to go to it because, um, yeah, the police tend to go down pretty hard, especially if it's if it's black lit. So I wouldn't actually um, advise anyone to go to these things. Yes, of course, because, of course, breaking lockdown rules, I mean, increases the risks of catching the coronavirus. I mean, I understand that at these raves, I mean, there's really zero social distancing and very few people wearing face marks, masks in a hot and sort of sweaty environment with people sort of packed closely together. Socially distance and, and we are... I uh, suppose uh, a, a group of people, in, especially in the UK, who I suppose, you know, we don't really like being told what to do. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's it, even, even, even when we could um, socially distance, we weren't adhering to it anyway. So let alone now that you've kind of been let people out, um, a mass of people in the streets, it's, 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 it's virtually impossible, especially after one has had you know maybe one drink or two it's very virtually impossible to kind of you know adhere to any social distancing um, routes 
so yeah i mean unfortunately um yeah it does happen and and hopefully it wouldn't lead to a spike in 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 the whole um, infection rate well i'm glad that you you say obviously that you're not attending it i mean because um from what i understand um the the, the authorities have announced at the weekend um, that organizers of such illegal raves now face increased fines of more than thirteen thousand dollars i think or pounds but i mean you're a rich man anyway you can afford it can't you i mean it, let, let's face it you know you you oh, were part of the group yabba funk i mean your mm -hmm. your band i remember the band was quite popular in 2014 i mean i i remember you guys you know playing sort of high life music mixed with james brown and parliament and all that sort of thing i mean is is yabba funk still around today or have you kind of metamorphosed into something else no yabba funk is still around um we're about to kind of start recording our third album when the whole COVID thing sort of hit yeah we're still around we're still we're still we're still playing at festivals and clubs and um, wherever and, and anybody would have us, and the music is still the same. It it has it still has its roots in 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 Ghanaian high life or African, you know, the, the Af African music. Um, and you know, like you said, because we have kind of grown up in the UK or uh, in Britain, we have picked up other influences as well. So there is, it's it's a it's, it's a very hybrid sound. Um, and we're we're hopefully we'll, we'll keep we'll keep on going until until um, we we start dropping off. Well, I mean, I, I don't know what you can see where you are, but we've got a split screen here with Yabba Funk um, with your face on one side and Yabba Funk sort of on the other. I mean, a great, great music, I have to say. Um, very experimental and I, I think kind of captures a lot of experimentation that's gone through the UK historically, you know, back in the days of two-tone and all of that and, and sort of going forward. To, um, to, to what you're doing today. But just a final word from you. We've got about 20 seconds. Um, you know, you, you, so you think in spite of the fact that the Notting Hill Carnival has gone virtual, musicians and performers are still able to, you know, lift the spirits of people who would normally attend. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's what the whole of um, London has done. I mean, it's, it's not just in, because I, I live in sort of um, Southwest, it's not just here. I mean, it's it's all over London. I know friends in North London who are doing things. I know friends um, in, in South London who are doing things. There are little events kind of happening as well. Um, obviously, trying to kind of keep the the, the 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 crowd down so people can kind of social distance. But yeah, I mean, you know, you, you can't. I don't think Corona is ever going to stop a party. Not in London. Okay, listen, I, I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, Richmond Kessie, the popular singer, DJ from the British Afrobeat band Yabba Funk. Thank you very much indeed.